Joining me now is Dr. Lawrence Kobolinski, Professor of Forensic Science at John Jay College here in New York. Doctor, good morning to you. Good morning. Well, let's talk about this laundry list of drugs on this affidavit. Uh, what does this tell you about the drugs that are in his system? Uh, I mean, all of these concoctions, at some point, a doctor's got to look at this and think, that this may be too much, this could kill my patient. I think that's absolutely right, Chris. Uh, these uh, drugs, most of these drugs, are what we call benzodiazepines. They're given to prevent anxiety. Uh, they're muscle relaxants and they are sedatives. So they are commonly prescribed for people that can't sleep. The problem is, is that there are so many of these drugs. Each one by itself is not given in a lethal dose. It's no these are normal dosages, but in combination, they add up to more than what uh, the common individual might think. A physician should understand the synergistic effect of all of these drugs together. As a professional, you're looking at this, and this it just looks negligent to think that all night long, because Michael Jackson is not able to go to sleep, to keep administering more, especially under home care, where propofol is not supposed to even be administered in home care to begin no, with. That's absolutely right. Propofol is not a commonly prescribed drug. It's not prescribed at all. It's used for surgical procedures, uh, ambient. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the the kind of procedure where you you come in, you you have your dental work or yeah. whatever and then you move out. Now the graphic said no propofol, but of course he didn't administer the propofol at first according to the affidavit, but later at 1040 in the morning did, and that could potentially, from what they're saying, be the lethal, the mm -hmm. lethal dose there. Let's also talk about some of the other parts of the affidavit here. Just a couple of quotes I want to draw here. Um, Jackson finally falls asleep after Murray does give him the propofol. Now a short time later, he stops breathing, Jackson that is. Murray administers CPR and gives him Anaxay. Now what was behind the, the I guess, administering the Anaxay at that point? Well, he clearly the doctor recognized that uh, this was uh, toxicity due to these benzodiazepines. Anexate is a medication that uh, it's, it's an antagonist. It works against benzodiazepine. It competes for receptors in the brain. So this was the right thing to do to try to get him to recover from benzodiazepine poisoning. But it may have been too late because that's to reverse was too late. exactly what the propofol did. Also, um, had he not received the propofol, would the other drugs that were administered been enough to have killed him? It's a very good question. Um, certainly, if, if he had any kind of respiratory dysfunction, I think uh, the combination might have killed him. I, it's like the straw that breaks the camel's back. This is a cocktail, a toxic cocktail, uh, and it just, uh, I'm very surprised that a physician would administer all of these things over this period of time. All right, Dr. Lawrence Kobolinski, thanks so much. And the other thing to remember, still no tox report, so we still don't, this is just an affidavit and a search warrant, still don't know what the tox report is. Absolutely said. correct. Thank you so much. Thank Julie, you. let's go back out to you in Los Angeles. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Joining us now is CBS News legal analyst, Lisa Bloom. Lisa, good morning. Good morning. What are the chances that Dr. Murray will face criminal charges in this case? I think the chances are very high. With all, every new piece of information that becomes public, it looks worse and worse for Dr. Murray. And what would the charges be? Well, the charges would probably be manslaughter. Now we're hearing the word homicide. That's the word that's used in this search warrant affidavit, which I've read. Homicide is a big umbrella term in the law. Under that could be murder, manslaughter, or negligent homicide. And sometimes a homicide, which is just the killing of one human being by another, is not a crime at all, such as self-defense or justification. But that's not present here. I think we're looking at manslaughter charges, if any, against Dr. Murray, and that's highly reckless conduct that causes the death of another human being. If prosecutors take this to trial and go for that charge, what is the likeliness, if he's found guilty, that he's going to spend time behind bars for this? Because it sounds like perhaps unintentional manslaughter? Well, but that's what manslaughter always is. It's always unintentional, but it's a high degree of recklessness. And I think the chances are very high that he would go to prison if he's convicted. Three to six years would be the typical term under California law for manslaughter. It's not like murder, which is the intentional killing. We're looking at life in prison. You know what jumped out at me, by the way, in the affidavit, which was really underreported? This idea of secrecy, that Dr. Murray didn't use his DEA number, Drug Enforcement Agency number, that doctors are supposed to use when they order meds. The police say he didn't use that. He got propofol some other way. When he talked to the paramedics, when they came and took Jackson's body, he didn't tell them that he had administered propofol so very recently. He didn't mention it at all. When he got to UCLA Hospital, he still didn't mention it. It wasn't until two days later when he had time to reflect and perhaps thought, look, it's going to be found in Jackson's body. That's when he revealed it for the first time. Under the law, we call that consciousness of guilt. That's going to be a very bad factor for Dr. Murray. Well, stay tuned. Lisa Bloom, thanks so much. Thank you.